I'm about 30 miles south of Fort Sumner, New Mexico. I've been driving about an hour now and I have not seen a single car. You know, you think of rural Wyoming and Nevada as being very desolate, and they are. But man, New Mexico's right there with it. Let you enjoy the silence. This is the very definition of a lonely road. <laughs> so peaceful though. Anyway, I'm just filming this because I want you guys to know that there are places like this in the US, those of you who live in the cities. And it is amazing. It's just amazing. All right, well, let's get back out on the road. Fort Sumner coming up. All right, everyone, I am entering the old Wild West town of Fort Sumner, New Mexico. This place looks like the old Wild West for sure. Fort Sumner has a really interesting footnote in history. It was in 1881 that the Sheriff Pat Garrett gunned down William Bonney, a.k.a. Billy the Kid, right here in this town. Billy the Kid's gravesite is here in this town as well, and you better believe we're going to go see that. But uh, before we do, we're going to explore a little bit. There's a graveyard there, or cemetery there, but that's not the one that Billy the Kid is buried in. That's yeah, very colorful, isn't it? St. Anthony's Cemetery, it says. All right. Well, I'm going to head into the downtown just right up here. Give you a little bit of the sights as we head in. Uh, the peak population of this town was in 1950. There were almost 2,000 people here. Today there are a little over 800. So it has lost some uh, people. 58% of this town is male. 42% female. So that's a good thing if you're a lady. Not so good if you're a guy. 74% of this town is Hispanic. 24% white. Uh, two percent mixed race. I can already tell this is going to be an interesting little town to explore. You can see in your mind people on horseback pulling covered wagons, can't you? This is um, the main street in the town. So we'll go check, check the town out, downtown area. It's pretty quiet. It's about 10 a.m. Uh, on a Saturday morning, January 20th. Not a lot of folks out right now. Tell you the median household income here it is 35,600 that's 685 dollars a week 
that old gas station. Uh, that's pretty low income, but you know what? Poverty is not bad. 14% overall. Children 17 and under, it is only 9%. For folks 65 and older, though, not as good. It's 30%. Well, let's see. I think there's a main street here. This is it right here. I'm going to pull into this. It looks like an old gas station. Let's get a look at this. It's got some artwork here. Blacksmith. Huh. That's kind of nice. Well, I'm trying to get my signals to stop. There we go. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I was looking at the cost of living for this town. Uh, it's 24% lower than the US. The main reason is for housing, which is 69% lower, according to the chart. But the median home value here is 113,000. So that doesn't really add up. But then I looked at the average rent the average rent in this town is $399. I don't have to tell you, that's pretty low. Hunt's Grocery Service Station. Well, I guess I'll head right into some residential here. Well, let's see what else we can find. It's hard to imagine anyone living there, isn't it? all the cars in front of this little house. Looks like a whole bunch of people live there. Little house tucked in the trees there. There's a county courthouse here. I'm going to try to find it. Might be it over there. Anyway, yeah, that house looks like it's long abandoned. Uh, here's the post office for the town. Fort Sumner, New Mexico. Yeah, I think county courthouse is right here. Yeah, let's go take a look. So Fort Sumner is the county seat for DeBaca County. Yeah, and this is the county courthouse. This is the second least populated county in the state. There are only 1,700 people in this entire county. This county courthouse was built in 1930. It's colonial architecture, American colonial. But look at that. Uh, terracotta roof. It's definitely got some southwest influences, doesn't it? Well, there you go. I saw a cat hiding over there. There he is. Hey, fella. That is a big cat, too. Hey, buddy. Look at the camera. Yeah, he's just busy. He is a big boy. Yeah, there he is looking at us. Almost looks like a little lion, doesn't he? Wow. It's a beautiful animal. The median age of this town is 27. By the way, I don't think I relayed that to you guys yet. Which surprises me. That is really young. 
uh, usually these towns that are I mean let's not kid ourselves this town it's dying I mean this is what you see everywhere towns like this are usually much older it's apparently had an influx of young folk at some point I don't think you can say anything else about this town except that it is dying. Two cats though. What's up fella? Yeah, you're the second one I've seen. So they do have cats here. I've seen two cats Zero humans. Yeah, this is everywhere here. Not sure if it's abandoned or not. I think so. That yard is pretty unkempt. door here. This is just everywhere. Wow. Old stucco houses. a very small house. Oh, did you hear that rooster? Nice. Yeah, that house. That's a goner too. Yeah. Blight and abandonment. It's it's everywhere here. really quiet yeah, depicting the uh, old west and I am back on the main street Let's see, I didn't give you crime yet, did I? It's low. Uh, 1.7 incidents per 100 people. That compares to 2.3 for the US. Billy the Kid's grave is not far from here, so I'm thinking let's head there right now. Well, here we are, Billy the Kid's grave and Old Fort Cemetery. I've got a marker here. Let's see what it says. William Billy the Kid, Bonnie Grave, 1859-1881. Henry McCarty is better known by his alias William Billy the Kid Bonnie. His family moved to New Mexico Territory in 1873. Bonnie was charged with numerous thefts and involved in nine murders during his brief life. At age 19, he was sentenced to death for the murder of Sheriff William Brady. On April 21, 1881, Bonnie escaped from the Lincoln County Jail, killing two deputies. He fled to Fort Sumner, the home of many of his friends. Bonnie was shot and killed by Sheriff Pat Garrett in Peter Maxwell's house on July 14, 1881. His grave in the Fort Sumner Cemetery was originally marked by a wooden cross. Well, it appears that it is this way. 
Post Cemetery, Fort Sumner. Looks like it's back there. I'm going to have to... You know what? I'll just go underneath like this. Oh, there we go. All right. And it's uh, right here. Let's go check it out. Billy the Kid's elusive tombstone. Wow, got all kinds of stuff here, huh? This tombstone was stolen in 1951. Its location was a mystery for 26 years until 1976 when it was recovered in Granbury, Texas. Stolen again in 1981. Recovered in Huntington Beach, California. Wow. So, that's why it's uh, locked up. <laughs> that makes sense. That would be some tombstone to have, though, in your collection, so to speak, wouldn't it? Uh, is there two of them? Billy the Kid, born November 23, 1860, killed July 14, 1881. The boy bandit King died as he lived. Hmm. And then there's another one here. I guess these are the grave sites, huh? There's three people buried here, it looks like. Tom O'Fullier, Charlie Beaudry, William H. Bonney, alias Billy the Kid. So right next to the grave site, there's some brief bios of the two guys buried with them. Charlie Beaudry, unlucky friend to Billy the Kid, uh, fought alongside Billy the Kid in the Lincoln County War. After losing the war, both he and the Kid retreated to Fort Sumner, New Mexico, where Beaudry worked as a cowboy and was a suspect in Billy's outlaw endeavors. And right next to it, there's the gravesite. Here's the other guy buried here. Tom O'Fulliard was the best friend of outlaw William Bonney, Billy the Kid. Both were members of the Regulators during the Lincoln County War. How about that? Uh, he was shot in the chest by Sheriff Pat Garrett uh, at Fort Sumner, dying approximately 45 minutes later. How about that? Yeah, that is too cool. Well, there it is. The grave side of Billy the Kid and his buddies. Wow, check out this one. Joe Grant, shot January 10, 1880. By William Bonney. You think that's the actual headstone? Wow, that looks so old. Here's a little information. Joe Texas Red Grant died January 10, 1880. It is said that while drunk one night, Grant had the misfortune of getting on the wrong side of Billy the Kid at Beaver Smith Saloon in Fort Sumner, New Mexico. After a heated discussion, Grant bet Billy $25 that he would kill a man first. Billy feigned false admiration for Grant's gun and asked to examine it. While doing so, Billy rotated the cylinder to an empty chamber, anticipating trouble. Billy and Grant eventually got into an argument, and as Billy turned to walk away, Grant tried to shoot Billy in the back. But all he heard was a click. Billy turned and drew, firing three shots, killing Grant instantly. What a story. Yeah, it's definitely worth coming out here. When I was a kid, I devoured Old Wild West books about people like Billy the Kid. It's really uh, exciting to be here. Uh, everyone, I am in the town of Tabin. I think it's pronounced. It is, in essence, a ghost town. Uh, the census doesn't count it as a town anymore. So I couldn't really get any numbers. I believe there's about 50 people here. The destination is on your right, Taven. Thank you. 
Australian Siri. Forgot to turn her off. Yeah, but um, well, you can see for yourself, there's not much happening here. But check it out. It has a post office. Taben, New Mexico. It's like a store here. I don't think it's in operation. Antiques. Taben Trading Post. I mean, this is a major highway. <laughs> Uh, there's no cars here, nothing. A bit of a fire department, though. Man. Rural New Mexico. Uh, there's a church here, though. That's the main reason it came here. Let's see if I can find it. I think that's it over there. Yeah, it's built in 1908. That's it. Now, this is something, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to get out and take a look at this. Man. This is stark, stark and lonely. Yeah, like I said, built in 1908. Now let's go see the inside. Don't think we're gonna see much though, except some graffiti, obviously. Guess it's safe to walk. You look at this. This is something. We all die. Yeah, that is true. Did you wonder what this looked like back in the day? The desolation of New Mexico. Fantastic, isn't it? And there's some cars. Amazing. Well, all right. gas station long gone to the next town. All right, everyone, I am in the town of Melrose, New Mexico.
Let's see, uh, peak population of this town was in 1950. There were 936 people here. Today there are 470. Uh, median age is 49. So it is an older town. U.S. it's 39. 74% uh, of this town is white. 21% Hispanic. Uh, last 5% is mixed race. Median household income is $34,000 a year. So that's about $650 a week, approximately. Poverty is uh, pretty high, 24%. Children 17 and under, it is 25%. Folks 65 and older, though, it is only 3%. So that's uh, it's really low for them. Cost of living is 23% lower compared to the rest of the U.S. Median home value is 58000 So you can get a house pretty cheap here. That's downtown. Uh, don't think anything has been going on here for a long time, though. A really famous person, especially to those of us who are older and watched cartoons as kids, was born here. Uh, William Hanna of Hanna-Barbera fame. He was born here. Yeah, of course you know Hanna-Barbera uh, cartoons, Tom and Jerry, Flintstones, Jetsons, Scooby-Doo. Maybe the most prolific cartoonists in history. He was born in this little tiny town. Uh, let's see, crime is pretty high here. Latest numbers, 5.1 incidents per 100 people. That compares to 2.3 for the U.S. It's about twice higher. You know you're in the country, in the old wild west, when you see someone riding a horse instead of riding in a, or driving a car. How about that? That might be the first person I've seen in any of these towns, I think. It's out for a morning ride. That's pretty nice, isn't it? That was a good sight. I like that. Well, the town's lost half its population since 1950, so you expect to see some of this, for sure. Well, they have less than 500 people, but they got a fire department. I did see a gas station coming into town and a little convenience store. I don't think there's a grocery store here. I don't even see a Dollar General anywhere. Uh, they've got a little medical facility here. I mean, it's small, but it's something. Rose Medical Clinic. Well guys, I spoke too soon about the Dollar General. There it is. I think that's a brand new one. That's just getting ready to open. How about that? And they have a second gas station right here. With a restaurant. So there's that. 
Well, everyone, I've arrived at the town of, I want to say, Elida. The town has uh, got its name from the founder, who had two daughters, one named Ella, the other named Ida. And they just uh, combined the names to come up with the town's name. So, Elida, I'm thinking? I'm approaching downtown here. Uh, in 1960, there were 534 people here. Uh, today, there's a little over 160. So, like the towns before that I've shown you today, it's lost a significant amount of population. It seems like it's barely surviving. Uh, so, uh, well, see, to start with the median age, uh, it's 53. So it's an older town for sure. Yeah, there's downtown. We'll head up that way. 70% uh, of the town is white. 30% Hispanic. That's it. Pretty good money, though. Uh, $48,000 a year. That's the median household income. I'm not going to lie. I'm not seeing that yet. That's pretty good money. That's over $900 a week. For a little town out here. Kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, poverty's pretty low, too. 13% um, overall. Children 17 and under, it's 13% as well. Folks 65 and older, it is 22%. I tell you what, this downtown, there hasn't been anything happening here for a long time. You can definitely tell it was bigger or more populated. There's quite a few buildings here. Uh, but um, there's nothing happening in terms of there being any kind of commerce. I mean, it's got a square. That's what I'm driving around. Yeah, basically a park in the middle. Uh, see what this says here. A lot of memories. It's abandoned, doesn't it? I guess that was a duplex. Uh, here's the post office. Right there. The light of New Mexico. Hmm. Well, I was, um... Looking at the cost of living, it's 23% lower. And look at this. Um, used to be a gas station, I guess. Look at that gas pump there. Wow. Check out this cat. You see him on the other side of the fence there? Hey cat! Yeah, that's right. I'm talking to you, buddy. 
Look at all this cactus. Jeez, that just does not seem livable. I guess someone lives there. You expect to see a lot of empty homes here, and I'm seeing it. Well, no, that might not be empty. It's got a light on. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this one is, though. With the kind of population loss they've had, there's going to be a lot of empty abandoned houses here. There's one, another one. That's another empty house. Stop signs upside down. Uh, I was looking at the crime numbers for this town, and uh, they're a little bit high. Our latest numbers is 5.5 per 100 people, Comparison 2.3 for the U.S., so crime here is almost twice higher. Yeah, there's definitely a post-apocalyptic vibe here. That over there. here a lot of the town just up and left that's what it looks like Can you imagine a zombie coming running out of there okay guys that's the end of this video up next we are heading to Roswell the city that aliens from outer space have visited oh yeah that's coming up next, and uh, we will see you there.